it's extremely frustrating to arrive home after a shoot where you've shot a sunrise, a sunset, or any other photo that uh, contains bright highlights and dark shadows, only to discover that your photos have been underexposed. And uh, this is unfortunately uh, a scenario which, which is faced by many photographers. However, with today's technology and with the help of Lightroom Classic, we can get to this image from this image in a few simple steps. Let's take a look at how to do this. As always, I found a few shots which have been underexposed in camera and I imported them into Lightroom Classic. Today, however, we'll be working with this shot in particular, which is basically a, a, a small island of the coast of Malta, which is called Filfla, and a, a sort of rock formation where there's a, an artificial waterfall. Um, uh, in, in this shot, you can see that the, the foreground is severely underexposed, mainly due to the fact that the, the background and the sky is nearly properly exposed. In order to, to achieve and recover the, the details in this photo, we're going to start off by playing around with the basic adjustments. And obviously we're going to start with the exposure, making sure that we try to expose the photo in a proper way as much as possible. We're going to also decrease the highlights and increase the shadows to sort of achieve a proper exposure across the, the whole photo. Now with that done, um, the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the angle of the shot and now I'm going to start to play around with um, more advanced techniques to achieve the look that I really wish to achieve. Now I'm going to um, uh, introduce some negative dehaze and some negative clarity to add a bit of a dreamy effect in, in the scenery, especially in the sky and in the sea. And then I'm going to increase the texture to retain the details in my, in my subject and in my texture areas like the rocks and the waterfall itself. Now next thing I would like to do while I look at the shot, I can see that there's this green grass growing in, in the parts where the water flows. And I would like to remove that because it's, it's slightly unpleasant in my eyes. So I'm going to desaturate all the greens. I'm going to go to the Hue tab. And I'm also going to move the green slider towards the yellow in order to um, achieve a look that mimics or uh, resembles a lot the color of the of the rocks themselves. Next thing I can do is I'm going to enable profile correction and, and I'm going to introduce some vignette here. And to compensate for the uh, exposure in the sky, I'm going to add a light linear gradient, a very subtle one, just to keep that overexposure up there a bit um, under control. Next thing I would like to do is make sure that my, um, my waterfall is prominent enough in the shot and that your eyes um, uh, go towards it immediately. Now to start off with I'm going to select a brush tool, I'm going to increase the flow and density in order to select the areas I want to select quicker and I'm going to paint over the waterfall. Painting over the waterfall perfectly isn't necessary, but the better the selection, obviously the better the result you will get. So I'm going to paint only where there is the water flowing. I can see that there's some water down here as well and right here. Now the first thing I want to do with this mask is to increase the exposure in order to make those whites pop out a bit further, going to decrease the highlights slightly and increase the whites and decrease my blacks to add contrast in that area in particular. We can also play around with the contrast itself or with the amount of uh, the mask edit. So I think this looks pretty nice. I'm going to add yet another brush mask and I'm going to this time paint over the rocks which lead towards that, um, that waterfall and also the rocks that flow along the waterfall itself. So let's start painting this 
can be very rough painting, doesn't need to be specifically perfect. And the aim of this mask will be to lead our eyes towards the waterfall, towards the main attraction of the scene, let's say. Similar to what we did with the waterfall, we're going to increase the exposure of these areas. We're going to make sure that our highlights are bright and that the shadows are dark. We can increase the whites and decrease the blacks. We can also emphasize this look also in these areas right here, which flow down towards the water. And we can play around with the amount of this edit accordingly. Now in order to compensate for this uh, extra exposure on these parts of the rocks, I'm going to create a small linear gradient at the bottom, similar to what we did at the top, and I'm going to underexpose this area slightly. So my eyes are immediately led towards the waterfall by following that brighter part of the image. One more mask, and this time I'm going to create a sky mask, basically I'm going to select the sky, and I'm going to add the sea to this mask. And to add the sea, I'm going to select the brush tool, and I'm going to paint over the sea. Once again, no need to be perfect, we can even um, paint slightly over the rocks because the rocks um, along the edge of the sea are slightly dark, so our edit will not affect them much. So, With that mask done, we can now play around with, with this look. So I'm going to increase exposure by a bit and decrease the highlights once again to um, even more uh, subdue that bright area in the sky. And I'm going to decrease the shadows and now I'm going to play around with the temperature and tint in order to introduce those hidden blue and purple hues in, in the sky. We can also use a bit of dehaze here, so positive dehaze this time, reduce the clarity and compensate with a bit more texture. We can now play around with the proper white balance of the image and we can introduce slight reds to compensate for the purples we introduced in the previous step. And we can also reduce our temperature slightly. Let's move over to the color mixer once again. And we can see that since we've introduced these colors up here, we can move our sliders to change the colors as we please. Now I'm going to move the blue slider slightly towards the purple, the purple slider slightly towards the magenta, and then we can move on to saturation and saturate these areas even further. And now that we've achieved a, a very nice look um, compared to what we started with, which is a very underexposed image with basically no points of interest in the shot, now we can move over to reducing the noise that we have introduced due to exposing a very underexposed shot. So when a shot is underexposed and you increase the brightness, you increase the, uh, the overall exposure of the shot, you will be introducing a lot of noise. So with the help of uh, advanced technology and AI, um, we have this option to use artificial intelligence denoise um, which basically scans the image and makes sure that it removes the noise which is unnecessary in the image. And in order to see the denoise function, you can click on the image and you will see the noise without the enhancement. And if you release that click, you can see the enhanced image. We can play around with the amounts and I don't like to overdo this um, denoise function but this amount, close to 30, should be very good for, for this image in particular. Now one final thing after you've done editing is to always compare the before and after shots. 
and right here we can see that we've gone from an extremely underexposed image which was literally unusable to this really nice composition which sort of flows towards um, our center of attention which is the, the waterfall itself and that little tiny island right there is compensating the rest of the composition. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you can apply these techniques in your editing workflows. Please make sure to like and subscribe for similar tutorials and thank you for watching.